morning, everyone. Thank you for being here with me. My name is Lisa Espinosa, and if you've been to my Facebook Live before, thank you for coming back. Uh, also, just you know this already, but I'm starting today's is at 9. Usually it's at 10. I think I'm going to still keep the 10 o'clock time. It's just today's something. I'm entering this like really interesting part of my schedule right now for the next few weeks, so you might be seeing the Facebook lives at a little bit of a different time, but I always announce it on Facebook and on my newsletter so you can know when I'm going to be doing these. So thank you for being here. Hi, Robin. Um, so let me see. I got a little distracted. Okay, let me tune in. So first of all, I am a spiritual career coach, so my soul's medicine is all about helping others evolve their soul medicine. So what that means is how you serve the world, how do you help others? So whether that's your career or just kind of how you are in the world, everybody has a unique set of gifts and talents and a unique training that your life has given you. We talked about that before, my last blog was about that, how your most important training is not the training that you go to school for, although that's important, that certainly helps, but the most important is your life, is what your life has trained you to become. A lot of times it's those challenging times that really um, enhance and deepen our wisdom, our compassion, and our ability to share our light. So today, um, after the meditation and the little teaching, I'll have just some announcements. So if you want to stay for those, wait till after. Today's, as I meditated, and um, the way I prepare for these Facebook Lives is to go for a walk and just kind of check in. I always have a plan, and then after I walk, it's like, nope, <laughs> the plan is gone. There's something else that really is not my soul. I mean, I think it's my soul, but it's really, I feel your souls. I feel like when I ask, it's really like, okay, whoever's going to watch this Facebook Live, whether you're here live or you are watching the recording, I really kind of ask the universe and ask spirit and your souls to, to guide me on, okay, what do they need to hear? So today what really came forward and was one that we're coming to the end of July, right? We're almost at the end of July. And one of the things, hi Leah, hi Donna, that I do, um, at the end of the month is always just do a, a quick, and I mean quick, I don't mean like this doesn't take a long time, um, little tuning in and prayer and I check in and just kind of ask to be reminded of all the blessings and the lessons of the month that is ending so that I can be open to receive all the fruits of the following month. So that was one thing that came up. And also, you know, the fact that Friday was a lunar eclipse and there was a full moon. There's also Mercury retrograde. There's all these astrological things happening. And I'm not an expert in that, so I'm not even going to pretend. But I do know enough that, um, you know, when these things are happening in our planet, they really, we can use those energies to catalyze, to enhance our journey, to to I think the, the most important things that I find they help me with is to release what doesn't serve me, to really just kind of have this like, okay, purge and release, and then to recommit and embrace my path. Hi, Lynn. So um, that's what was kind of came to me today as we, as I do the teaching, as I lead the meditation. On Friday, if you were in class, in meditation class at Beverly Yoga Center, I did you know, it's all about, um, you know, what are those blocks that you might be holding, those burdens that you might be holding that are making it harder for you to share your soul's light, right? To listen to your soul's guidance. So that, it's almost like the most important thing because hearing your soul's guidance is really meant to be something natural that flows, that it's our birthright. We all, it's not supposed to be hard or tricky or, or like you have to do this really elaborate thing. Your soul wants to talk to you. So it's really important to remember that. However, we all hold these blocks and burdens and wounds. Sometimes we're holding other people's stuff and it's so important to really have a daily practice of releasing what doesn't serve you. It's like um, 
it's like you're improving your internet connection, right? Or releasing the static when you're watching TV so that you can really hear your soul. So um, today's meditation is going to be around that. And I'm also feeling guided, and I forgot I had received this on my walk, to just remind you of what are the qualities of your soul. Because I find, and I forget, even though I wrote about it in my book and I talk about it with my clients, it's really important to remember that your soul is unconditionally loving. Like your soul loves you just unconditionally as you are right now. It's not trying to fix you. It's not like, wow, I wish you would get it together. Like your soul loves you now. It's um, infinitely compassionate. What your soul is guiding to you to do is what I'm talking about right now is to release your own limitations and blocks and burdens and beliefs that make it hard for you to receive your soul's unconditional love and your soul's wisdom. So the reason I'm bringing this up is because a lot of times when I start um, coaching my clients through connecting with their soul and receiving their wisdom, at first, their own self-judgment really gets in the way, right? So our own voices, our own parts that might say like, oh, why is this taking you so long? Why are you still messing up in this way? Or da da da, And they confuse that with thinking that's what their soul is saying to them. So I want to tell you, whenever you connect with your soul, if you start to hear some criticism, some frustration, some berating, pause know that that's not your soul speaking, it's a part of you, and that's okay, you can have compassion for that part of you. But remember that your soul always talks to you in the most compassionate, loving way. And that can be really challenging for us to accept if you've never had a person in your life that relates to you in that way. Now, some of you might be very blessed to have someone in your life or had someone in your life that was that way, a parent, a friend, a mentor, who you always felt that compassion from. But a lot of us, perhaps our parents, and this isn't in any way to judge our parents, they did the best way that they, you know, they, they did what they were taught. They did the best that they could. But maybe they, that's not the way they related to us. Maybe they were taught that the way to relate to children was to, um, you know, not through unconditionally loving ways, but through criticizing and through always kind of correcting. And there's a place for that, of course, but if that was the default, if you grew up always just kind of being criticized and corrected, then you, when you tune into your soul's guidance, you might at first confuse a voice, your own critical voice for your souls. So I'm saying this to you now, and sometimes I find that people actually resist connecting with their soul because they're worried that their soul is going to be disappointed in them, that their soul is going to judge them. And I want to share here that that is not the truth. Your soul, the last thing your soul wants to do is increase fear in you, increase shame or guilt or any of those feelings that make it hard for you to share your light. So when we tune in, when I lead this meditation, which is going to be all about releasing blocks releasing people sometimes when people do this they realize oh my gosh i'm just releasing this person that i've been carrying on my back that your soul always 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 is deeply respectful of you deeply honoring of you deeply compassionate and loving and never impatient of course your soul wants you to have the most joyful fulfilling life so it is leading you forward if it sees that that there's a path that is just going to be a long detour but it's never like rolling its eyes like oh here she goes again you know like it's always like all right i love you wherever you are i love you and i'm here i'm here just patiently waiting for you to connect with me so before we start uh the meditation for today you know, getting comfortable. If you have a journal, something you want to write on, you know, have that with you because that can be helpful. The other thing is to always remember when you come into a meditation where you're going to ask your soul questions or going to ask your soul for guidance, it's so important to not um, put pressure on yourself to, to be consciously aware right now in this moment of the guidance that's coming. The reason I say that is, again, because a lot of times our own burdens, we might have a burden around, oh, I just have horrible intuition, I can't hear my soul, 
I can't trust myself. So when we come into silence and I guide you through this, those fears might come up. And I want to really reassure you, and first of all, that your soul is always answering you. Your soul already gave you the answers. It already knows what you're, you know, what we're going to do. But if you put so much pressure that, okay, I have to hear the answer right now as Lisa's guiding this meditation, you're probably going to be so nervous that you might not hear it. So I want to tell you, just let it go. If nothing comes during the meditation, trust that it's going to come. It might be later when you're driving, when you're taking a shower, when you're washing dishes, when you're with your kids. Like, it'll come through different ways. So trust that. So I just so so right now just enjoy it. Your focus is just on relaxing, having fun, enjoying this time. That's what it's on. Not on like, oh I, I hope I get an answer. You really try to just let that go and just have a really joyful, um, special time right now with your soul, with your heart, with everybody who's watching this live and who's watching the recording. Right? Because I always, I just want to share, I'm being guided to share this. Before I start, I always say a prayer. And and I just kind of like, I feel like my heart just becomes this magnet. And I just say, okay, whoever's meant to watch this, have them watch this. Whether it's live or the recording. And I trust that if your soul leads you to watch this, that there's something in this message. Whether my teachings or the meditation, that's going to be really useful for you. So... Uh, and afterwards, I'll pull two cards today. I was guided to get two decks for you. So let's get started. So wherever you are, I'm going to bring my legs up. Just getting really comfortable. <clears throat> and maybe closing your eyes if that helps. Closing your eyes, taking some nice cleansing breaths. So just some deep inhales and deep exhales. And as you do that, as you take some nice deep breaths, bring your awareness to your pelvis and your hips, to your thighs, your feet. And you can even visualize these beautiful roots of light going down your legs and out the bottoms of your feet deep into the earth. Letting yourself feel very anchored and grounded and present. And you can even see all of your roots connecting with the roots of everyone watching, connecting with my roots. So that we create this beautiful network of roots to support this time, to really ground whatever guidance you receive from your soul. And then also as you scan your body, notice if you're holding any tension, if there's any distraction. And if so, just let the, set the intention of just dropping it, just releasing it into the earth. Knowing that the earth will recycle and use this as compost. And now bringing the palms of your hands right over your heart center, so right at the center of your chest. Breathing into your heart. Knowing that your heart is the entryway to your soul. Welcoming your soul, your beautiful, loving soul. Remember the qualities of your soul. Your soul is loving, compassionate, wise, patient joyful so receiving your soul's love and compassion your soul's delight that you are here open to receiving its love and guidance and with your mind's eye using your imagination or perhaps just a visual that comes forward Imagine that either your soul is in your heart, your soul's light, or you can imagine your soul holding your hand. 
or whatever image works to visualize your soul next to you, with you. And then you are going to visualize now a beautiful bridge, not a big bridge, just a beautiful bridge. Perhaps it's a bridge that's in a forest. But notice this bridge and you're walking to the center of this bridge with your soul. And as you look over the sides of the bridge, you see this river underneath. And you know that it's a magical river. It's a river that dissolves, that takes apart, that removes. So that as you're standing here with your soul, you are going to ask your soul for guidance on what is it that you are ready to release, what burdens, what old beliefs, what blocks, what wounds, even what relationships, what activities are just ready to be released. And as your soul gives you this guidance, just imagine you're just throwing it into the river either a symbol that represents it, perhaps you picture luggage, that you're just the old baggage, right? You're just tossing it. So let's go ahead and ask. So you're standing there. And first, let's ask this question. We are on July 30th, right? Almost all done with this month. So ask your soul, first of all, is there anything I need to release from this month, July? Is there any experience that was traumatic or hurtful, triggered fears that I need to release? And then just release it. Just imagine you're holding, you can even imagine you're holding a rock that represents it and you're tossing it into this river. Again, is there any experience, any trauma, any stressful situation from this month, from July, that I don't want to take with me the rest of the year? That with your soul's help, you can release it. Imagine that you're just tossing it into this river, any stress, any tension from this month. You don't need to logically understand how this works. And then asking, is there anything from 2018, anything from the last months? And don't put pressure on remember, remembering everything. Just ask your soul. If your soul puts it in your mind right now, then that's what needs to be released. So as from 2018, starting in January, all the way to this moment, okay, beautiful soul, help me to release, to let go of any burdens, any experience, any beliefs, any stress that I don't need to carry anymore. And again, just see you're throwing rocks or maybe you're throwing this baggage, just throwing it into this water underneath this bridge. It's this magical water that dissolves and releases. And asking again, are there any relationships, any activities that I need to release? And it's not like you're dropping the people in the river, but you are releasing the cords that bind you to these people. If they don't support your highest path. So if you're willing to release those relationships, just let them know. And, and sometimes it doesn't mean that you'll never talk to these people. It might just mean an adjustment. 
all right, that you realize that you are in a different place than they are right now. So just set that intention and just say with great love and respect to these people, you let them go. And now finally asking, is there anything from my life, any year from childhood even, that I am ready to release so that you can show me, show me in my mind, any wound, any stress, any belief, any burden that I can toss into this river of release. And just send it, just release those limiting thoughts, limiting beliefs, limiting burdens into this water underneath this bridge. If you don't know details, that's okay. Just set the intention. Just say, I'm willing. I'm willing to let that go from my past and release it. And as you're standing there on the bridge, just imagine your soul placing her hands or his hands. Of course, your soul is beyond the gender. On the crown of your head and just beautiful light coming from the crown of your head through your whole body, filling you up as you let go of more stuff. Just letting it be released, be released, be released. All you have to say is that you're open. And coming to a closing here. Looking down at the water, thank this magical water. And now continue walking to the end of the bridge. And you notice that when you get off the bridge, there is your golden path. We've been working with this golden path for a long time now. And see the golden path. And notice how you're so much lighter now that you've let go. And you are ready to step on this golden path that represents August, September, October, November, December of 2018. And as we come to the close of this meditation, just asking your soul one final question. So asking, beautiful soul, what do you want me to embrace so that I can step into this golden path with more joy and flow? So again, beautiful soul, what do you want me to embrace to have more of in my life so that I can step on this beautiful golden path with more joy and flow. And one last time, beautiful soul, what do you want me to embrace so that I can step into this beautiful golden path with more joy and more flow? And just receive, receive. What does your soul want you to embrace? Remember, it's okay if you don't receive the guidance now. It is there. It will come. And bringing our hands to prayer pose in front of our heart. See your soul infusing your aura, that beautiful cocoon of light that surrounds you with light. Feel the earth underneath you as we bow to each other's heart in our own heart. And we close this meditation with a namaste. Namaste, everyone. And just do a nice stretch. And I'm going to burn some sage. And hi, everyone who's joined us. Elizabeth Lynn. I'm just burning some sage to close this circle. Mm. That image of the bridge just keeps coming to me. And um, 
you know, as I shuffle the cards, feel free. Like, it's so helpful to repeat meditations, you know, like I, so later on, if you want to list, watch the recording, just forward to the meditation part and do it again. And it's amazing how, Namaste Robin, how every time you do it, you'll receive more guidance. You'll receive deeper guidance because you're able to receive more deeply each time. So I want to say that. And so the two cards decks that I'm working with today are, um, one is the Power of Surrender, Love This Deck by Dr. Judith Orloff. And then the Goddess Deck, yay, an oldie but goodie. So uh, if you've never used cards before, you know, I write in my book, this is just an indirect way for your soul to speak to you. Meaning all the decks I use are positive and beautiful. They're not predicting your future. They are most of the time validating something your soul has already been telling you. And sometimes, yeah, they are pointing to things that you might have not been able to hear your soul say because you're so busy or you're so worried or you're so nervous. So these two cards are for everyone watching. You know, the universe, your souls are so wise. They can multitask and be efficient. So I'm just asking, all right, with these cards, what message do you have for these beautiful people who are watching live or watching the recording? All right. <laughs> okay, this is so perfect. Surrender outdated beliefs about yourself. I mean, we were just doing this. Let go of limiting ideas about yourself that originate from the past. Then you can own your power and soar into your life. Look at this. So just what we were doing, everything you were tossing into that bridge and and the rest of your day, you might re you might notice like, oh my gosh, there's this old belief I have. I have this belief that I have to martyr myself, that I have to take care of everyone else before I can step into my path. That's one example or <laughs> whatever comes, you know. So it's saying, let them go, let them go, let them go. They're not serving you. They're not serving the people you love. So that's first one. Beautiful. Hey, Tiffany. And goddess, goddess, goddess. So we'll ask, so really the question here is what goddess is helping everybody watching this video, this Facebook Live, either live or the recording, which goddess energy is helping them to really fully step into their path to release what they need to release? I <sighs> love her, Anya. Leap of faith. Look at her, she's leaping. And it says, take a risk and put your heart's true desire into action. So these go together, all right? So first one, release outdated beliefs. Hey, Salvador, release outdated beliefs, release what doesn't serve you. Um, and if you're like, well, how do I do that? First step is just set the intention. Don't worry about how, just set the intention. Just say, I am willing to release the baggage and do the meditation that we just did. And then it's saying, take a leap. Look at her. She's saying, take a risk. Put your heart's true desire into action. Do this today. <laughs> like, so I, I really feel it's Monday. So I really feel this is like for the week. But, but like do it daily. A risk can be little or big. Like a risk can be like going to a yoga class. It might be like you've been putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And it might be like, okay, I'm going to go to this class. That might not seem like a huge thing, but that was something I did. Gosh, no, I don't remember how many years ago. And that little step, which made me so nervous because I'd never been to a yoga class before. Oh my gosh, opened so many doors. So don't put this. So like, keep it simple. Like risks can be a phone call, can be, you know what, I'm going to put my to-do list aside. I'm going to go take a walk and listen to my soul. Like really, um, or I'm going to schedule a session, whatever, whatever the risk is, do it. All right, my dears. So just a couple of reminders. Next um, Facebook live, I believe I'm going to do it on a Sunday. So I'm going to Mexico for two weeks. Yay, Greg and I am so excited. We're going on the 6th. So that Monday, I'll be traveling super early. So I am I really want to do a Facebook Live that Sunday before we leave. So just stay tuned and notice the announcements about when I'll be doing that. The one after that, if I can figure out how to do it from Mexico, I will be doing it uh, from lovely Baja California in some sacred space. Um, so just stay tuned for that. Go to my website if you want to read more about what I'm doing and if you want to schedule a private.
session with me if you're feeling like you'd like to receive a career coaching, spiritual career coaching, if you go to my website at lisaespinosa.net, that's L-I-S-A-E-S-P-I-N-O-S-A.net, and go to the Start Here page, and you can see how you can just apply and um, have a, a free one-hour private session with me and talk about like if, if we can work together. Also, September 2nd, Reiki workshop. Sign up. Now, if you want to come, it's Sunday, I think 1.30 to 3.30. Whether you've never heard about Reiki before or whether you've done it, but you feel like you, you're kind of disconnected from it, come back. Um, or just you love Reiki, then come. It's always good to receive another attunement. You can see the flyer at the Beverly Yoga Center website and read all about it. And also just to plant the seed, September 28th, I'm doing another women's retreat at the Center in Palis. It'll be from 10 o'clock to 4 a beautiful beautiful event i mean i'm really mean that so if you are a woman that wants to spend a day tuning it's not an escape it's tuning into your soul it's connecting with other beautiful women um really start saving that date and registering it i'm really kept it at 15 15 one five women so you can already register it's 144 dollars um I sent it in my newsletter, but if you need the details, message me or email me and I'll send it to you and, and register ahead of time because the price will go up in a few weeks. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a lovely, lovely day. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for joining me. And I wish you the best. Have a wonderful day. Bye. I can't say bye, apparently. <laughs> there